Thank you all for being here. This is the Game of Thrones memorial panel. Those of you who, who we lost in season four. And uh, just wanted to start at the beginning for all of you. What was it like coming into this huge and epic show? I just realized that some of you might not, might have just been meeting for the first time. Jack and I have just met as in 20, 20 seconds ago. Yeah, I wonderful. Yeah. It was amazing. It was, it was amazing. It was a wonderful handshake. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. So what was, uh, I guess we can start with you, with you, Pedro. Why uh, are you going to start with me? Because you're, you know. Because you, you, you I was were, sitting yeah. directly across. Yeah. Yeah. You've across been looking straight at me and I'm like, can, I'm going to get the first I question, aren't I? can come to you as, I? As, a, as an anchor. <laughs> Great. But you're the newest kid on the block in season four and, and, and snatched away. Big in, big out. Yeah. What was it like? Had you seen the show before you before you started? I had seen every episode. So coming in, I felt like I knew more about the show than everyone on the show. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's true. What was your first day? What was the first scene you, you had to shoot? A six-page scene with Peter Dinklage. <laughs> oh, that big, that and big a scene. monologue. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. When you're telling the story of uh, seeing, of meeting Tyrion of as a meeting baby. Him and seeing oh yeah, as a that's baby a huge, like that's a lot of his, text. And, and, and becoming his ally and, and telling him that I would uh, fight for him. I will be your champion. <sighs> and Jack, you've been with us, I think, longer than anybody here. You, you date back to the very original pilot. Yeah, I was very, very intimidated when I went on. It was such a big scene to begin with. I think it was the scene where all the Lannisters and Baratheons go to the Stark House. So right from the get-go, you know, I was kind of thrown into just meeting everyone and kind of getting to grips with, uh, first of all, riding a horse. Yeah, I'd never kind of ridden a horse before. <laughs> and uh, it was actually quite a nice atmosphere. One thing that's lovely about your performance and your interpretation of Joffrey, and, and I, I can actually put this question to Charles as well, is that you're both villains in the piece, but neither of you approach, approach that at all, and I think it really shows in the characterization. Yeah, I mean, you want, not for there to be sympathy or, or empathy, but perhaps just, uh, just that it's not so black and white. So that's a fun kind of tension for me to play, someone who's so kind of perhaps superficially evil, you know, to see his motivations and perhaps just humanize him a bit. Tywin's a kind of emotional desert, really. <laughs> mm. But it's, it's kind of great fun to play because Tywin is king of this lot, really. <laughs> and I, I think mean, he does know that. Of course, does. The king, <laughs> but you know, I mean. Yeah. What was your first day on set? Which was the, was the, could, it couldn't have been the stag scene. Was that your first? No, that was the second one. The, the, the first one was, was in a tent. It was in a tent that was in a field in a, yeah, at freezing. three o'clock in the morning. Yes. <laughs> bitterly cold. And I thought, why are we in this tent? <laughs> There are no shots outside the tent. <laughs> this tent could be set up on the studio floor and we could all be warm. Instead of freezing our asses off in the middle of this field, yeah. 20 miles outside of Belfast. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Game of Thrones. But, you know, the end result, like all of the stuff in this, I mean, it, it looks absolutely sensational. Mm. And then David and Dan came to my trailer one day and said, are you vegetarian, Charles? And I said, no, why do you ask? And they said, you have a butchered a deer before? I said, no. Um, so this guy came in with a dead animal and a selection of knives, and we skinned the deer. But that is, that's one of the great character introductions on but the show. It was, yeah, it was, it was terrific. Uh, Rosie, what about your, what was your first uh, day? What were your first my, experience coming onto the show? Actually, my introduction was also the character's introduction as well. It was our first, first day. And, um, and it was the capture of Egrets. Uh, by Jon Snow, and it was um, that scene whereby it's the most beautiful, just sensational backdrop um, over the glacier. Was that the glacier that yeah. cracked and everyone had to... No, that was the lake. So this was, I think this was at the end of season two, and we were shooting on a lake, and then we decided to take a crew photo in the middle of a frozen lake, <laughs> and we heard this deep, rumble this deep crack and ev and everybody just fends for themselves <laughs> like people are pushing past <laughs> they're like fuck yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it sounds like a good burn. way to, to break the ice indeed so, so. indeed oh. no, that was, that was very good very good keep that, that wicked really humor you can keep that <laughs> And Mark, I mean, you've, you've shot, obviously shot in Iceland as well, but I think your first day, if I remember correctly, was a unusually was hot Castle Black day. Yeah, it was boiling hot. It was off. boiling. It was August, and we were all in, our, all in our furs and stuff, our cloaks. And it was John Bradley yeah. having his ass beaten. That's right, it was, so the, it was the introduction of Samwell. Uh, yeah. It was his first... Uh, yeah. Was that John's first day as well? Uh, it Being probably was. Sons, yeah, it actually. was, actually, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think Ooh. it was, it was, it was John, all yours. Yeah. John Luke's and mine first First job, first day yeah. on set ever, anywhere. Wow. Yeah, it was great. 
You sure you want to do this? No. And, uh, Sabelle, what was your first uh, day on the show? I was topless. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, mean, I met Peter, so it was in a tent, and I really questioned myself also, you know, I asked myself, why are they shooting here, you know, <laughs> on a field? It was really, it was so cold, and I was topless, and I was like, oh, God, <laughs> what I'm doing here. But I'm, it was all he uphill from there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Tom, well, you came in uh, into season three. Yeah, I came in in season yeah. three, so everything had kind of already been established, um, which was kind of nervy as well, because um, I, I knew it was quite a big show, and I was expecting it to be a bit of a machine, which it is really, um, and big cast, big crew. So I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, and I just hung out in the bar afterwards, and everyone was just really cool and very welcoming. And Who was hanging around the bar? No one asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Do you drink alcohol? No. No. Not when you're working. Not while no. we're building. No, just it's hang around the bar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Watch others do it. Yeah. yeah. Sparkling water. Oh. Yeah, sparkling water. <laughs> Game of chat. You probably have all had some, some interesting fan encounters uh, over the years. Can uh, you speak to, speak to that? Uh, you know, there was a guy, we were, we were crossing the road, it was this year actually, I think it probably <coughs> in October, and we were with Kit, and this Irish guy came over to us and he, he went, you're, you're, are, you, are you Kit? You're Kit? Are you? Yeah, I, I am, yeah, very humbly, I, I am, yeah. <laughs> um, you're you're Jon Snow. He's like, yeah, yeah, and he looks at him, takes his, a second look, and he's like, no way, you're too fucking short to be Jon Snow. <laughs> 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 and ran off up the street. <laughs> Anybody else have any, any interesting fan in, in, encounters? I learned about my death from a fan. Really. Oh, did you? Yeah. That's how you found out. I was well, going to ask. Yeah. How? Because how... <laughs> I um, I'm afraid I haven't read any of the books hmm. at all. Well, they're, they're that thick. They're rather frightening. Yeah. You know, they, that alarms me when I'm confronted with a book of that size. And a guy came up to me in the street in London. You know, he said, "Game of Thrones, fucking great." You know, I said, oh, well, "Thank you very much." He said, "You've got a great death scene." Uh, I said, have I really? What is the manner of my death? <laughs> you see? <laughs> anyway, yes. and he told me, and I thought, oh, yeah, that's what I've got to look forward to. manager. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Yes. That's, so, we, so you, but did you know you were going to die at a certain point when, when we... No, I had absolutely no, no. idea. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. No. We'll get to the death scenes in a minute. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss those in detail. Um, but uh, any other, before we kind of move on to the death side of things in the end. Are there any, any particular favorite moments you had in the, over the course of the season? Yeah, I, I have many. I'll pick one. <laughs> Shooting an orgy that gets interrupted by Charles. <laughs> Some like you, Charles? That was one of my... That was, <laughs> my, <laughs> that was one of my favorite days on set. Yeah. One of the actors she she, uh, she she wouldn't wear her robe, do you remember? Yeah, she just wandered <laughs> around. So we're in the green yeah. room, you know, and we're playing words with friends or something with, with, <laughs> with David, and Charles is reading the paper, and next to him is a completely naked person. <laughs> 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 and, Charles, <laughs> and Charles has the paper, and, and she's trying to talk with him, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> And he looks up at me and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> Charles, a naked woman. Yeah. David Benioff, words with friends. Yeah. <laughs> you never thought you'd, you'd, you know, you never thought you'd reach Game of Thrones. these heights. Yeah. Um, what about uh, you do beyond the wall types? Any, any favorite? Moments? I think my most, well, actually, yeah, my most memorable scene would have been actually climbing the wall. Oh, so yeah, it was when they built the art department are incredible. They built this 50 foot wall um, in, in one of the studios and then kind of like surrounded it with green screen. And, and we were all very well looked after. We all had our harnesses on and our wires and, um, and I had to be dropped. Oh my God, yeah. it was amazing. And you're really climbing there. They, they... We really are, but it was obviously very safe. But you know, it's kind of like for dear life. And then you've got a wind machine on your left and a snow machine on your right. And it's all, it's all very much in the moment. It really so is, cool. it really, really is. <laughs> but without telling me, they uh, decided Decided to drop me at a faster rate, oh. um, just so that there was that kind of like shock element. So that was real, guys. That was real. <laughs> There's no acting involved there. I really didn't know I was going to get dropped at such a fast speed. Got it. And <laughs> we got it. And now we can move on. Charles, what was? Do you have a particular favorite scene or moment from your time on the show? Yeah, it was a great ego-boosting moment to actually ride into a 
palace. Mm. That looks oh, pretty cool. Yeah. That with, hero shot. Yeah, you know, with a couple of hundred extras with a horse that does an enormous dump just at the top of the shot and to <laughs> ride straight down through the middle. I mean, it's, you know, it's quite, it's quite heady stuff, really. It's yeah. great. Jack? I'd certainly probably go along with, 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 with Charles' idea of the ego boosting thing. I think my favorite kind of most memorable scenes were when, like, I just have a uh, hundred or so minions listening to my every word, you know, <laughs> beneath my feet, like the wedding feast itself. That was fantastic. And then the massive lion, lion head mm. through which the, uh, the, dwarves, the dwarves came, came out. That was amazing. Such a kind of a kid, like a kid's imagination just being like, I want dwarves dressed up as like these people fighting yeah. each other. Yeah, that was very memorable. It's like Joffrey's uh, MTV Sweet 16. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Charles has already answered this question, but I was I guess we're open with uh, how, when did you find out you were going to die? How did you find out? And, and I mean, you, with you, it was probably kind of part of the whole pitch, uh, right? Because, yeah, I knew uh, yeah. before I uh, got the part. And there was constant talk about how it was going to happen and how disgusting and horrifying it was going to be and and how it would compete for one of the most disgusting deaths in Game of Thrones, which is saying a lot. <laughs> yes, it's true. Right? If I were to make the top three, then that's just pretty horrible. I'll never die that badly again <laughs> for the rest of my life. I think you most certainly have made the top high. three. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If not the it would, top. right? Yes. Until you see it, it's disgusting. It really is. I'm fighting a six foot eight, <laughs> 420 pound. He was six foot eight? He was six yeah, foot eight, 420 pounds, and his sword was, it was like my height. <laughs> from like the, you know, from the handle up to, it was, it was my height, and he'd like wield this thing around, and I have my little spear that I'm helicoptering around, it's like trying to move in like tight leather armor, you know? I'd like finally like learned how to, I'm like, look, I can make that woo, 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 woo noise. <laughs> and then they put on this tight like leather armor, and I'm like, it's gone, I can't do it anymore, you know? And could you talk a little bit, since we're, since we're on it, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the process of smashing your head they, they shot my head being completely split open, the blood and everything like that. And then the, there was a final shot, and they put all of this um, prosthetic, like, goopy, disgusting brain chunks, little <laughs> bone marrow, you know, and then, like, just pumped the blood so that it just... But it was all very cool. Like, it was... The temperature of it was completely cool, you know? So they're like, this is gonna be really uncomfortable. This is gonna, you're gonna feel a lot of pressure and you're not gonna, but you, it's okay, we're gonna have like breathing pat. And I was passed out. I was like, yeah. <laughs> completely out. So uh, uh, Mark, you, now this is interesting because, you know, Gren's not dead in the books. No, he's not. Yet. No. We killed Gren early, uh, but it was really actually, early. it's really a compliment because we, we knew that the Battle of the Wall had to have consequences for characters that the audience loved and care about, and yeah. that, would be, that would be you and Joe uh, Alton, who plays Pip, who also meets his maker in the Battle of the Wall. Yeah. Um, were you told, or did you have to read no, it? No, I, I opened the script for oh, episode nine and started reading this epic battle sequence that lasts the whole hour, um, 100,000 versus 100, guarding the wall for honor, and the survival of mankind, and I get to page 92. There's this scream of the Night's Watch oath going into battle, and there's the gate in front of me, and I, I skip 10 pages, and I just see Gren is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, the fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend was sat on the, on the sofa opposite, and I went, the Fucking, that's, do you know how much money we're gonna fucking lose because of this? <laughs> you can wave bye bye to the car. Fucking... I got to Belfast and David and Dan were stood in the bar and I just put a hand on each shoulder and I was just like, you fuckers, you've killed me. <laughs> yeah. You've taken me away. But yeah, we, I mean, it's true. We were in the writer's room. We said, you know, it's gonna kill. It's gonna kill the audience, but we have to, they're, they're, they're gonna, their hearts are gonna we break. To we gotta kill Gren. We hurting them. We gotta hurt them. <laughs> if we're not hurting over them, and then the show doesn't, and over doesn't, again. doesn't work. And you haven't told your, you know, at the time of this recording, you haven't told your folks, right? Your parents that. Uh, no, I haven't told. You're anybody. gonna watch it with them? Yeah, absolutely yeah. nobody knows. Absolutely. So they're, what, they're yeah. probably watching it now. So. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like filming that scene? I mean, you're basically having to act against a giant that isn't there. Yeah, it's just a big green sausage, really, yeah. coming towards you. And the, they had this camera shot where it, 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 it was on a crane. And it started high and came low, and I'm laid there, and it sort of drifts into my eyes. And it was timed with John Bradley and, and Kit 
walking through the tunnel to discover the body and they were walking at such a slow pace and my eyes are open in the death. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's there and it's coming, I'm like, I'm go no, I'll blink, <laughs> cut, right. start again, there we go. But it's quite a scary thing, isn't it, knowing that you can't blink. Yeah. And as soon as your head starts going, don't blink, don't blink, don't blink, hold it together, hold it my together. My eyes had to be kept open by two people. Yeah, 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 because I just couldn't do it. Yeah. So it was the, it was the director of photography and, and, the, and the director who came over and was like, Jesus Christ, Jack, come on. It's just like, <laughs> literally held my eyes open so, so they could take like a CGI shot of my face and then like, I don't know what they're doing. Oh, they're going to take the hands out. Or something like that, I wow. don't know. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's we my level of like, ineptitude. <laughs> like. <laughs> It's a hard I thing. It is. And Rose, you you probably did. Were you informed of your death when you took the, the part, well, or did I, you? Do you know what I um I, d I did a bit of research before I started. So prior to even season two, I'd read all the books. That's a lie. I'd read four. Right. So um so yes. Yeah, so I I knew of my my character's arc even before I started. Yeah. Um so I yeah I knew it was coming and I knew that um it was going to be happening in the big kind of battle sequence. And uh, no, so I was, I was well prepared. Yeah. And your, your death scene was your last night on set as well, it wasn't was. it? It was. Do you know, and that it was, was so touching that it was scheduled yeah. that way because I don't think, um, oh God, it was very emotional. So I don't think it, you know, I would have come back <laughs> like, would, the next on. day to try and be really, really happy. It would have been quite a struggle. But, um, but yes, no, it was uh, beautifully timed so that it was my final night, my, you know, my, my death scene dying in the arms of Jon Snow and then mm -hmm. gone. Everybody surrounds in a big circle and starts clapping. I break down in tears, mm -hmm. and um, and then Tommy Dunn comes up with my with my arrow, oh. and it's in a beautiful kind of like it's a beautiful packaging, and it's on like a case, and there's a velvet, a red velvet bed made for it. And um, was your and yeah, was it your bow or it was, was my it? bow? I'm sorry. Yes. It, so it was my bow, um, uh, and and you know beautifully kind of presented me in two ways, so, uh, so yeah, no, it was lovely. And then there was h hugs and more tears, and uh, it was great. I think I just, I didn't even think I could speak. I think I was thanking you so much, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was, um, a, it was yeah. an emotional night for, for me. It was, it was a, it was a lovely night. Um, yeah. And Charles, we know how you found out about your death. Uh, what was it like shooting that, uh, what uh, I think, at the time of this taping, I can predict will become one of the great scenes of the series? Well, I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. To be quietly sitting, you know, having his morning ablution. <laughs> for to be killed by your son. He <laughs> kicks open the door. I mean, it's a great way to die. It's a pretty spectacular death, do you know? And, you know, in a way, who better to kill Tywin than Tyrion? Because I've treated him appallingly all his life, do you know? I mean, it's a right and proper end for Tywin, I think. And Jack, you, you died memorably and, and violently and horribly, but uh, before that, I believe you shot your funeral, you, you were lying in state yes. in the Westerosi fashion. Cross with state. Yeah, yeah, with, with, the, with the stones over my eyes, That's yeah. Right. That was actually probably one of my favorite days of shooting, because I was getting paid for literally just having a nap. <laughs> you were talking about <laughs> sleeping, yeah, I was like, I was just there in between takes having the time of my life, and I was in a beautiful black gown, actually. <laughs> you were um, very pretty, Dan. Yeah. I did look great. Yeah. Um, when I knew I got the part, I think I instantly checked Wikipedia. I didn't really think about it, to be honest, for a while, and then it's like, I suppose, third or fourth season, I realised it was going to come, it was going to come to an end. Um, well, but it was fantastic filming it, you know. It was so exciting. Because it, it was such a long scene, it was, it, it was that wedding feast scene. So, you know, it was, uh, it was such a big scene that, this was kind of a, 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 a nice catharsis that, that came at the end. And we had to do this thing, uh, which was like, you, you know in school when you make that fake volcano, you have like, you know, like vinegar and baking soda. I was told, put my head back, we're gonna put some stuff in your mouth to make it foam up. I didn't know what, what they're gonna put in it. They put like, probably like that much of vinegar into my mouth and then poured, poured baking soda straight in and it just frothed up like as if like oh I, my my, God. I was shaking. Did you swallow any of it? Oh, I swallowed so much of it. Oh, I stunk no. of See, vinegar for the, whole, for the whole night. I had to do it like 12 times. It was, it was <laughs> horrible. It really did leave a sour taste in my mouth. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh, There's that Gleason wit. It. I love it. <laughs> it's, a glor it's a glorious death. And again, I think it speaks to your portrayal of the character and your humanity that I think everyone watching it, even if they've been rooting for Joffrey's death, you feel bad for him. I mean, it, it's just so. I mean, like, he's just a kid, you yeah. know? That is, yeah. Like, people forget he's just a kind of a... A kid, you know, he is pretty evil and malevolent, but yeah. he's just a boy and he's dead. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. pretty sad. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, Tom, you're, you're, you play another character who 
all apologies, is not dead yet in the books. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Parrish is on the show. When did you know you were going to be killed? Did on, you read it too, or? On the plane journey over to film it. <laughs> it's when I got to the last bit of the last episode, and I was just reading through, I had no idea. No one told me, really. Really? Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, okay. producers. And then Jojen gets stabbed. <laughs> it's like, ah. But I'm all right, though. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'll be fine. <laughs> it's, it's OK. Yeah. That's going to be quite fun. His sister comes over and slits his throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. wow. Gosh, no, I'm definitely dead. Oh, maybe I'll come back as a white walker or something. No, then the little girl comes out and throws a Molotov cocktail at me in a burst of the flame. <laughs> so, no, I'm dead. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely dead. <laughs> now that was that's one of the more involved crazy sequences we've ever attempted in a, a series of a lot of involved crazy sequences yeah. where the, the whites come out of the snow. No, it's uh, great. A, a ton of VFX work. I mean it's such a technical scene and yet it's also the, the, the emotional kind of climax for, for, for the, your character and for the season. It was, in, it was incredible. I mean we were again in true Game of Thrones style shooting in some miserable quarry and it was very cold and very wet. And they built these kind of graves into the ground um, where they hid these poor stuntmen. And they were stuntmen partly in green. Yeah, they were screen, partly in green, but it wasn't just be... like a green blob that you, they, they then put all this fantastic prosthetic makeup on. So when you were looking at them and you were fighting with them, they looked like whites or, um, you know, looked really scary. It's a really cool way to go. Yeah. I mean, they're all pretty cool. Yeah, you go. have to admit, we do, fight we, at least to we kill you in glorious ways. But the yeah. best death you can, yeah, on Game of Thrones. And your death is a, is a real heartbreaker. Um, what was it like shooting, shooting that scene? Again, a, a hugely emotional scene on top of having to be strangled to death. I mean, yeah, by her love. By her love. Yeah, yeah. so, and um, I didn't have even the love scene with Charles. They didn't even give that to me before. <laughs> uh, no, no, so, no, I, no, I tried, darling, but... <laughs> <laughs> It was a stressful day. It was my last day. And it was your last day as well. Yeah, oh, and wow. I said, no, I'm not acting this. I can't. I, yeah. I need two, three days more. So after 25 takes, they said, Sibel, you have to die now. Oh. Just act. Your love story and tragic love story is one of the great arcs in the show. And, yeah, but you know. the people are going to hate me, right? Because at the end, I mean, no, I was at I the think, trial I scene. think it's complicated, which is the fun of it. Yeah, he you called know. me whore. I mean, you know, I'm not a whore. No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shay, I'm talking about yes, Shay. Yes. <laughs> um, so we, so some, some of your last days on sets were your death scenes, were, but not uh, Pedro. Your last scene, you, you went on for a while after you died, didn't you? I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was your last day on set like? What was My the scene? My last day was like staring out at the Adriatic Sea with Lena Headey. Uh, oh, the scene in episode five with the, yeah. the walk and talk. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, walk and talk. Scene. It was a bit righteous and selfish of me, but I got out of costume and I jumped into the I jumped in the water while everyone and everyone else was like, "Fuck you, dude!" Because <laughs> they, they, like, they, they, they had to keep working and it was really warm and, and like and, and 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 the the water was just begging to be jumped into. It was just like crystal blue and perfect day, and we were on this kind of like pier, and um, so I had this like really, really long running start where I just got to sprint towards the water and then just like, you know, dive in. And I'm like, you're like a fish, you know? Wee, wee. And they're all like, you fucking asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank, God Thank God he's dead. dead. <laughs> and you washed yourself clean of Oberyn Martell. Yeah, and then yeah. I literally and got into it. a van and went to the airport with Lena. Oh, wow. We oh, got with your new best friend. With we my got BF it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, well, what, why don't, we segue then into sort of the uh, kind of last thoughts of, 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 and we'll go around of, of a of your character and what it was like to you know what the character meant to you and 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 then this overall kind of the experience of Game of Thrones and what what that that, that meant to all of you and I, so guess, I guess we'll start I with you again? since we're here yeah. maybe talk about Oberyn <laughs> first a little bit just you know the experience of, of that character and in, in the story and then well he's such a badass. It was an intimidating experience playing somebody who, who lives purely through his passions, who is completely uncompromising. He does what he wants, when he wants, and it was a little bit of fun <laughs> <laughs> to do, and I had, the, I, had the, I had the time of my life. And Tom, any thoughts on, on playing Jojen and, and, uh, and the experience on the show? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's been brilliant. It's been great fun. It's been 
<clears throat> like I said, the first time I've ever actually been able to come back to a, a character that's been really nice to go away for a year and then you come back. I mean, I was only in two seasons, but uh, coming back for my second, I felt like I was coming home. Mm. It's a very good, talented group of people, cast and crew and everyone involved in it, um, cares an awful lot about it. And I think that comes across in, in the show and that's what makes it so good is that people really... And Sabelle, thoughts on Shay and your time on Thrones? I mean, you know, when I started with Game of Thrones, I didn't expect anything. That was the most, uh, best thing, I think. You know, I just, I just jumped in the cold water mm. and, you know, learned to swim. And Mark, what about your thoughts on, uh, I mean, you, you've been with us since almost the beginning and with your tight group of, of guys, yeah. the, the real camaraderie formed there. I, yeah, I it's been great. I mean, it, it was, I think, three out of five of us, it was our first job. Mm. Uh, so there was an immediate, out of insecurity probably, you know, a bond that was made, uh, and it felt like you were sort of returning back to a, a family or a brotherhood, as, mm. it, as it is in the show, <coughs> each year. Um, because Jon Snow's sort of our central character in that part of the storyline, you realise that although on the, on the page there's not as much to say, all of you are kind of holding a mirror up to that character and saying, you know, through our experiences with him, making him reflect on his own behaviour, and obviously Jon Snow goes through so many different twists and turns in the, in the storyline, an identity crisis a lot of the time, you know, wondering what he's fighting for and why he's fighting. I, I, feel, I feel sorry for Kit, you know, because without me stood behind him, he's not going to look anywhere near as good looking, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have to deal with that, I suppose. <laughs> and Rose? I, um, I have, I have a, a deep love for Egret. I think she's a, she's, she's a wonderful character, and I've so enjoyed playing her, and she is... You know, she's that other side of Jon Snow. She she loves to be as playful, you know, and, and try and tease him and taunt him and try and get him get him to smile, which is hard. And that kind of betrayal that she feels at the end of season three was very kind of well, she she's so hurt and devastated and um it was brilliant, brilliant to play. Just the whole her whole kind of shell. And Charles, any re reflections on Tywin and your, your experience on, on the show? Well, I think like everybody else, I've had a ball, really. And um, it was great being accorded the respect that I was, <laughs> principally because of the character, not because sure. of me, <laughs> actually. A little I bit mean, of both, it, I think. It, you know, it's quite astonishing, yeah. um, you know, walking around in all that stuff and being so appalling to people yeah. all of the time. It took me two years but, to even speak to you. You know, then, you know, <laughs> you know there's a, you know, a kind of distance from that. Yeah, sure. I know that that, all, that was all to do with Tywin, absolutely nothing to do with me. Well, it was great. Mm -hmm. Jack? Yeah, definitely that. That feeling of, uh, yeah, enjoyment and kind of schadenfreude or whatever, kind of inflicting pain on others, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> um, you're, you're one of the great villains in television history. I mean, it's weird. you are. You're, you're a cultural, <laughs> you're a cultural icon. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, again, and that's, and that's crazy <laughs> to think. I mean, like, I, I, and, and it's something that I suppose, like, people presume sometimes that I get a lot of... I get a lot of hate for being me, but everyone's always so nice. So to kind of have that hatred and that kind of, in a way, you know, admiration, if it's not too pompous to say, of kind of whatever the, the role that I've, um, I've helped uh, bring to life, it's, it's been amazing. What you all have brought to the show and to our words, it's the greatest gift a, a writer can have, to have actors like you and... Um, uh, interpreting them and, and bringing them to life and exceeding our wildest expectations. So uh, I'm going to miss you all, and I know the viewers at home will miss you all. And thank you so much for, for doing this and, and, and looking back with me. Oh, I really appreciate it. I have to it. cry. Cut <laughs> <laughs> we'll it before we lose it. Cut it before you lose it. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. It was fun.